Oh, here goes your tires, you buddy. Video, Brand I new can't. ones. You could have at least put the front ones on the back. Oh. Think about that. Moving right day and night. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be powered by science. That's very true. We better be able to get two people on what chairs about. Here it comes. Yep, that's it. Because every time I'm in his office, he's sitting there and all of a sudden he just reaches like this and there's a piece of chicken in his hand. <laughs> I'm like, how much chicken is under your desk? I overshot the R&D budget this week, so I'm going to need that $250. <laughs> <laughs> moving it right, <laughs> Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, sorry. What? Sorry? Didn't, my notification didn't pop up. I can't watch live. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Click the little bell, gives you the reminder, I, allows you to log in. I know, it's not doing it. Well, we'll anyway. We'll send you to Levi, he'll fix it. 102. Episode 102. Yeah, it's we're back 13th. to professional. We did a lackluster performance last week, but we're rocking and rolling now. Are we? I you, hope you so. Ready for today? <laughs> you were you here prepared. I'm, I'm, I'm late to the show, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how if you can carry the show today. Okay. All right. So we're going to take a deep dive look into cherry Coca Cola coking deposits mm. today. So it is a coking episode. Yeah, that was supposed to is be it last sponsored week. by cherry it, Coca Cola. It's not. I was just thirsty. Gotcha. <laughs> so uh, if you ever want to know anything about uh, coke, now let me preface that. Okay. Is this going to be fuel coking, oil yes. coking, fuel or both? coking, injector? Fuel. Injector coking, okay. Correct. Good. So if you didn't know about fuel coking, you're going to learn today. And as always, Are we're we? here to answer your questions. <laughs> we're going to try to educate you. It's an awfully bold statement. So uh, if you have questions, put them below. Specifically, if you've been sitting on that fuel coking question for weeks now, now's the day to ask. I think it I is. think it's the time is the time is today. So post your comments below. We'll get through them throughout the show. Uh, and at the end of the show, we'll be doing our weekly drawing, our, our product giveaway, which is, is it EDT or D Diesel Extreme? Diesel Extreme, we're giving away. And we've been posting this up ahead of time, right? So people have been submitting to win. And if I'm not mistaken, are we still doing it if you're live and we give you a bonus? Okay, so Woo. instead of us randomly picking people each week to give a prize away to, because we give stuff away on this show, just for showing up, now you can register <laughs> to win. Everyone's and then you come in here order. and you watch us on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And if the name's drawn, if you're watching live, it's a double win. We give you even extra stuff. So we'll be uh, announcing the names later in the episode. Um, you can enter each hey, week at hotshotsecret.com slash no clue giveaway. <laughs> Ooh, I was close. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> so uh, let us know where you're watching from. Um, we're still looking for South Dakota if you're out there. Uh, Sturgis week, right? I believe so. Anybody at Sturgis, you know, might be tuning in. There we go. So, what's that? Count. Outsiders don't count. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so uh, let us know where you're watching from. Um, we're dual streaming like normal. YouTube and Facebook. We're monitoring Facebook comments. So if you got them there, uh, post them. If you're on YouTube, we'll follow up and give you your answers later. Like and share the video. Hit the little bell, unlike Aaron here. No, I that... did. It popped up finally. Just, okay, just a little it's late. A, it's just a little You're late. You're probably like on the, the Wi-Fi, that's why. <laughs> I turned the Wi-Fi off. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and follow us on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and make sure you're following that Facebook R&D page of Absolutely. Hot Shot Secret. I'm up to almost 350, so watch out, Josh. I'll catch you. He's coming. 34,000 more to go. <laughs> so, we got to get to know us segment today? We are supposed I, to. I don't see anybody around. Did you have something? All right. We like to we like to get to know some people around here. Um, and we're going to do some review. We had a big uh, poll this weekend, finally. Josh was out in Iowa. I don't think Josh is taking a day off. This guy's driven across the country and back. Have you had a day off yet? Monday morning. Oh, he did <laughs> sleep in Monday morning. So uh, we'll catch up with Josh about that. Um... Uh, let's see, why don't we do some dealer shout outs? All right, let me turn my page. Yep. I'll Bob Seeger this mammer jammer. Dealer shout outs are Wicked Diesel in Bedford, Virginia. And I wonder what the video comment means in that. I forgot. Just kidding, there's no video. And Infinite Diesel Performance in Shingle Springs, California. It's one of TJ's new dealers. Oh, cool. So. Welcome aboard Infinite Diesel and Wicked Diesel. We'll get your video figured out, whatever that is. 
That's, I guess. That's for next week, Josh. <laughs> homework. Oh, Josh has homework. <laughs> <laughs> we all have homework. So, uh, so I think the Wicked Diesel might get a shout out next week as well. Lucky them. Yep. And welcome aboard Infinite Diesel Performance out there in California. Uh, TJ's a good guy, so you're in good hands. Uh, dealer wall. We do have some stuff for the dealer wall. So you guys may have heard they canceled SEMA. Pretty disappointed about that. It was going to be our our, deb our SEMA debut. We do go out mm -hmm. to Apex every year, which is tied into SEMA. It's right next door, if you will. So that's something we always look for every single year. But uh, this year we're actually going to be at Apex and SEMA. Uh, we were really looking forward to it. We're going to have the Firepunk truck out there. Um, yes. Unfortunately, it's canceled. Apex is also canceled. Uh, those that don't know, SEMA also owns PRI. It's all kind of tied into some one big family. And they say PRI is still a go. And so far, we've seen most of the events in Indiana have gotten right. off. So um, we've got hope that PRI is still, is still alive. And what I found in my bag the other day was, guess what? PRI sticker. A PRI decal. So... <laughs> Let's put PRI so, up on the wall. how many episodes of the PRI magazine have you been in? Just one? Oh, no, a lot. A lot? Yeah. Are you in one now? I've, I've last two years ago. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that. We should, we, we, we were talking, Brett said we should get that one. If you look at this month's uh, PRI magazine, they did a really good article on the diesel motorsports industry, and we've got a really nice centerfold picture um, of the Hotshot Secret Firepunk S10. Uh, Matt Rice, photo credit. Poor guy, I didn't give him the photo <laughs> credit on, so they're giving Hot Shots the photo oh. credit. Uh, but Brett said something to me. He's like, he's like, you know, those are the type of things we should like get mounted on the wall. And I was laughing because on our walls here, like we have one of our very first like just random ads we had like <laughs> right. in a Diesel World. Like they put it in like a seven hundred dollar frame. <laughs> it's like now we're in these magazines like every week, and we're like meh, <laughs> meh. So maybe oh, we'll get yours framed, and you can autograph it. Woo! Put PRI on the wall. Let's go. Door cam, go. Door cam, go. Yeah. Good timing. So shout out to our guys at PRI. Andrea, break my PRI uh, SEMA rep. She's awesome. She takes good care of us. So we're looking forward. And we are going to PRI as a go. We are in our same spot that we're in every single year. Mm -hmm. So come see us. We're, we'll have something cool in the booth this year. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Should I tell them? No. I know. I don't even know it. I never know what it is. Mystery box. Mystery box. box. <laughs> you have to come PRI and find Mr. out. Mr. Booth. Uh, also for uh, the wall, this is probably the coolest decal we're going to have on the wall. I, I got to give it up. I'm not sure where it's So uh, as, you, as we said, Josh and Christine were out in Iowa for the NTPA uh, poll this weekend. And Christine stopped by one of our dealers, Joe Bush Ag Repair. And how you need to give the close up on that one. Definitely. It's got bullet holes. Door cams it's go. Got pistons. So and shout out John to Deere Joe Mafia. Bush Ag Repair, part of the John Deere Mafia. Um, cool decal. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's a good one. It's probably the best job I've ever done at applying a decal on that door. You're getting as well. better. You're getting better. Perfect. So again, uh, followers. Instagram influencers, retailers, dealers, send in your decals. We'll put you on the wall. Uh, they were filming some more out here today, so it gets you a little love in the background of a lot of the production we're doing. Production. So let's rewind the clock. Zip. Oh, you've got like live mics too. Okay. Oh, so I don't have to take this off for my embarrassing. No, you can question. stay on set. Hey, I'm good. You better have a number ten then. I've got a number ten. So let's go back to our get to know us segment. Oh, oh now they're gonna thinking. they're gonna have to like carry her on set. It's live now. The world is <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's that's the best entrance we've ever had. <laughs> is that a, we got a live carry mic now? Cool. Check your mic. Hello. It's not. <laughs> you good, Levi? All right. So welcome to our Facebook Live. The whole world wants to know more about you. There's like, if I'm seeing the counter right, there's 70, 7,800 people online right now watching you. <laughs> <laughs> it's real easy, though. It's 10 questions. All right. And 7,800 people will know more about you when we're done. Oh, that's fun. All right. So first off, tell us your name and what you do here. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the mic. Uh, my name's Brooklyn Hudson, 
and I don't know what I do. <laughs> yep, I box hand, hand sanitizer. Oh, cool. Uh, where were you born? In Norwalk, Ohio. You got a good sound, Levi? Speak up, speak up. Norwalk, Ohio? Mm -hmm. There's a really famous racetrack up there. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been? Yes. It's cool. Do you ever, do you, do you like racing? No. <laughs> but everyone says that when you say you're from Norwalk, don't they? No, not really. Just us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so where did you grow up? Well, you're still growing up. Where are you growing up at? Uh, Fitchville, Ohio. Okay. What was your first job? Uh, Cravens. It's an ice cream shop. Oh, really? Yep. Like, is it a indoor place or like one of those like little? Yeah. Yeah. What's, what was your favorite thing there? Eating. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what was your first car? A 2010 Ford Escape. Oh, okay. I hope it's not Chris's Escape that he put lots of chemicals into <laughs> and passed around. So, And do you play any sports? I play volleyball. Oh, cool. And what is your favorite hobby? Playing volleyball. Nice. <laughs> what is your favorite holiday? Probably a tie between Christmas and Thanksgiving. Is it because of food or family? Both. Good answer. What is your favorite beverage? Uh, uh. Probably Sprite. Huh. Oh, shout out to Firepunk on that. They always have Sprite in their cooler. I never understand why. <laughs> I don't know anybody likes Sprite besides you and Firepunk. <laughs> uh, so, favorite TV show or movie? TV show, probably One Tree Hill. One Tree Hill. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have a favorite movie? I don't watch movies, really. Me neither. <laughs> so you made it through 10, but Eric, Aaron always has a bonus question before you get off the hot seat. Oh, it's totally. always a tough one, too. <laughs> Which is your favorite turn signal not to use? Well, I don't use either, so. <laughs> <laughs> neither turn signals. <laughs> Do you have a question for her before we let her off? You know you do. Something you've always wanted to ask her, and now you get to ask her in front of 7,800 people. She's going to be nice. <laughs> All right, well, you survived. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? Uh, sure. You want to shout out, like, your, your social media tags and stuff? Nope. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. We appreciate everything you do here. And another victim of our Get to Know Us segment with the best best entrance we've ever had i'm gonna start carrying you on set each day all right just like piggyback you out and fine with that <laughs> <laughs> oh our get to Wouldn't know be the first time would it <laughs> you're used to carrying me i mean at the job right 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 right, right, right. and the show for example so uh <laughs> let's let's do let's do some recap let's bring our residents oh, just after i sat down i right, know you can stay up here we can our resident uh, reporter, I'll just hang out way back our here. polling reporter. Yeah, geez, you guys gave me a bunch of crap about my reports on the. Miss, hey, we we did get a kick out of it. We went live last week. Josh like came out of his shell, for, did he for, not? Yeah. He's like four fifty two board, seven thirty nine. This thing's going double stack three. <laughs> I'm like, who is this guy? Why does so. he sound like an auctioneer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Josh, give us the NTPA highlight. We finally got a poll finally in. Finally got a poll in. Uh, had beautiful weather most of the weekend. We did get rained on Thursday night, uh, about an hour delay, but they got everything back back in order and had a great event overall. Still got done before midnight. Hats off to the Rockwell Lions Club and everyone involved with the event out there. We had a um, couple double winners over the weekend as well. Mm. Um, Bill Leishner in the Unlimiteds. Um, he normally runs in the modified group and actually stepped up to the Unlimited category and uh, did very well with that. Had the right a combination between power and the uh, good settings on the tractor to make uh, a great weekend for him. Um, his daughter Abby was driving um, the uh, Bobcat Mod Mini and won in that class as well. So um, good weekend for that family. Yeah. Um, Craig Brong, who uh, bought a new semi truck over the sum or over the winter, also won. Uh, I believe it was the first night out, so the first night in the truck. Congratulations to him as well. Oh. Yeah. So uh, 
Um, can't say there was um, any big surprises, but everyone was nice to see everyone again and to uh, get out. Great crowd. Um, yeah, I bet, it looked like I bet we had NTPA TV yeah. was airing it. Yeah. Yeah. So. They had a packed house. It looked like, on, especially Saturday. Yeah, Saturday night was packed. I mean, it was pretty pretty good. Friday Everybody's been itching to get out. Exactly. So. A lot of people and I talked to by the pullers too, right? By the pullers, yeah, excellent turnout. I think there was over 180. Wow. Yeah, so it was definitely uh, people from everywhere. Talked to a lot of people who came down from Minnesota, watched some shows up there normally throughout the hmm. summer. Um, guys from all over the place. So um, thanks to everyone that stopped out at the booth, to talked to us. Yes, how was the booth? I mean, probably first time we've had a full full blown hotshot secret booth at a poll. It was. Were uh, we received very nicely? We were received Good. very nicely. And Good. by Saturday night, I was I was whipped. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Welcome to the job. <laughs> yeah. And now, now, now you can attest. Everybody says, oh, Kyle gets to go out to has fun at all these oh, races. Oh, I, I already knew that being before being here, but I don't yeah, know how it is. It's like, the events are just something else. It takes brutal. it out of you. They're brutal. Yeah, you Absolutely get up. brutal. Normal time. Start oh, doing yeah. your thing. 14 and days. And then it's like, now tear down this whole stuff and pack it in their trailer mm -hmm, in the pitch black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we, 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 we do enjoy it, and we, we're glad to support the NTPA. It's good to actually finally get one in. Um, uh, I think we got some. Well, do we have something that's next? I remember on the schedule there were some local Ohio ones right in the and back And those end. got. They got icks. Got next. icks, thanks mm. to the governor's orders so mm. for the fairs Damn. and so forth. So I don't know if we got anything else. That's kind of everything in, is in question still at this point. Well, we've got some plans here for the building, which. Or I don't know if we are announcing or not. I don't know. We're doing some expansion here. We'll probably do an episode on one coming up. Yeah. But I was thinking when they start bringing all that stuff to like level land, let's just make a pulpit out there. Mm -hmm. We can just host our own right here in the backyard, right next to the drag strip we're building back <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> we can do drags and pulls, and then we can just do dirt drags in between them. All right. Uh, I'm Why not? totally down with that. We're all down with that. So. Well, thanks, Josh. Appreciate yep. our, our resident pulling <laughs> on the scene guy. <laughs> Hope to have a video here by the end of the week too. Oh, cool! So, cool. We'll we'll stay we'll stay tuned for that. I know it's almost the end of the week already. Yeah, you don't even know what day it is anymore. You need you need to take some time <laughs> off, buddy. Get Maybe some rest. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Josh. And there's our resident pulling expert, Josh Steinmetz, with the weekend update. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I had to reboot. I think I lost everybody's comments, so. Uh. If you if you commented what? early, how is that possible? You're not even on the Wi-Fi. I know it, it froze. I think I blame it on Levi. It was a broadcast interruption. Maybe um. you guys at home did that. <laughs> so uh, it on them now. I do see Lynn Miller's in here. What's up, Lynn? Dan Zelton's in. Dan Zelton did some work this weekend. He got the truck. He went down to the the, the, the Texas. Texas. Oof, oof. That thing is moving. So I'm happy for Dan. I know he's do had. Do you have a video? He's Dan sent a video. Um, I, I know he's he's had a battle with that truck. <laughs> like, <laughs> one step forward, two steps back, and man, he got it moving. So I don't know who's throwing all these hearts out there. It's probably James Bruce, I'm guessing. Uh, Dorian Reina says, "What's up, y'all?" Heath Myers says, "Need some diesel extreme, Kyle." Well, enter to win somebody. I think you were giving some away. Make sure you enter and win before each episode. Justin Ziegler, what's up, guys? Need to get you some stickers, Kyle. Yeah, you do, Justin. The, the, the wall needs it. Brian Fennell says, PRI was great. Yeah, Brian Fennell, he's one of our guys from USMC Racing. Yeah. We had a blast with him last year. Uh, I think they had a, ra a race that weekend. Um, and, but Brian actually came up to represent USMC Racing and uh, signed some autographs in the booth and really, really used the show to kind of get USMC Racing's cause out there. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I, one of the benefits from it just paid off because I know – uh, they just got two of those cool suits donated um, to the team. They're like ten thousand bucks. She's so big. Yeah, they're insane. It's more but than you know, their they, cars. they do road rust. <laughs> I know. No, Five hundred dollar no. cars, ten thousand right. dollar cool suits. <laughs> but you know, those those uh, endurance races. I mean, oh. they get stupid hot in there. Right. Um, but I believe Brian had said that it was from one of the contacts he made out of PRI. So that's why PRI is such a great thing. It's yeah. such an industry thing. If you need. You need to make any connection in the motorsports industry. You you go to PRI. That is the place. So, uh, miss you, Brian Fennell. Hope to see you soon, bud. Uh, James Bruce said, "I just seen it. It looks awesome on the wall." Uh, we do have uh, Cowboy Thor, Thor up there. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> Brian's got a cool decal for us too. Send them, guys. Come on, bring them in. We'll put them up. He's really he, he likes doing that. <laughs> he says, "Remember, I'm paying the bills." What you said last week. I used more than that dosage mentioned on the label <laughs> above and beyond. True story. You keep the lights on here. Josh Hernandez is tapping in. He says, "He says when wintertime gets here, is the anti gel going to have LX4 EDT product in it?" Awesome question, Heath. Awesome question, because we were just talking winter Whoa. anti gel. I know we hate to do that because it's like is, is summer over yet, and we're already talking winter. But a lot of we our just dealers bottled are bottled a whole bunch of it. This we blended and bottled this week, right? Actually, because it's uh, coming. People aren't necessarily the consumers aren't really buying it yet, but we have to get ready for our dealers out there are ready to stock it. Our retailers are yeah. stocking it to get it ready. And usually next month, we always say September is the month that you need to start throwing a bottle in the truck because you never really know. Um, and I said something to you yesterday. I said, you know the question is coming. So did you pay this fella to ask the question? I or did not. not okay. But the question has has arisen. Will LX4 be in our DWAG? No. No. Not this year. Not this year. Correct. But one question we had when this first came out, right. I remember right out of the gate, because we had that video done by uh Project Farm, and mm -hmm. it like blew up the the the, the, right. the the sales. And then we had this whole thing with the LX4. Like, can you add it or can you not add it? And we can comfortably say now we can definitely uh, mix the two. Absolutely. So you can, if you're going to be using our diesel winter anti gel, uh, you can definitely top treat with LX4. Yes. So, are you promising them next year? I'm not it? promising anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, obviously, if you saw the Project Farm video. We have plenty of lubricity in the DWAG. There, That's a valid there, point. There really is. Uh, yeah, I kicked butt on that wear scar test during that video. Yeah. That's a good point. Well, that, that's what we always said about the EDT, too. Everyone acts like we just added lubricity to it. It's like, no, we, we improved the lubricity in it. Right. But the old EDT formula had plenty of lubricity in it. Mm -hmm. You know, Now it's just off the charts. So, um, so cool. Sorry, Heath, there's your answer, bud. Uh, Beardick Medic with the top fan badge. Sorry, late working. That's all right. Uh, we, uh, we're acting like we're working right now. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's in. Richard Nicoletti, a.k.a. Jersey, is in. Heath Myers says, got two people this week to stop with competitor and come over to HSS. That's awesome, Heath. I have to uh, do, quote, competitor. You're free to shout them out. <laughs> Kansas in the house. You missed, you missed a few. I'm sure I did. That's Matt Rice, call my phone number, and you can talk to me. I'll put you on speaker. Matt Rice wants to call in. Tell him to call the Skype channel. You get Skype hooked up? Maybe. Tell him, tell him Matt, call our uh, Hot Shot Seeker Skype channel, and he'll bring you on. Does he have it? Everybody's got Skype. It takes two seconds to download. Make it, make it figure it out. I got Dan Zelton here with the top fan badge plus one. I can't. He's got the old plus one. What? Thanks, that... guys. And where do you want me to send a video? And yes, it's running strong after a lot of, let's say, issues. Uh, Dan, send it to uh, Levi. The, um, just private message in it to the Hot Shots page, and he can bring it up or uh, email to us. We'll get it up next week. Katie Steinmetz got her top fan badge back. See, you're out of the office one week, and Levi pulled that. See how that works? So <laughs> Katie says uh, to tell you that she's looking forward to seeing the NTPA recap video. Um, and I'm with you, Katie, and we, do, we are too. So anything I missed over there? Because that's all the comments I got. I know I had to reboot mine. I'm pretty sure that's good. All yeah, right. you just missed a few on the top. You want to address them right now? No. OK. We're good. <laughs> Sorry, suckers. <laughs> nope. It's just like, what's up, guys? So. Uh, Fellas, also, a recap studs. from last week, if I can give a couple more shout-outs off the top of my head. I know there was another JJ's arm drop, and we had a Hot Shot Secret sweep with that because uh, I believe Lee Roberts won Friday night, and then Anthony Smith, Turtle, won Saturday. So Money State and the MSO family, uh, both those guys run all of our adrenaline racing oil. So shout-out to our Memphis Street Outlaws. and. Um, I'm sure the local guys always wish they win, but you got to come big if you're going to beat those guys. They know how to get down the street. So shout out to them. 
Uh, we had a, oh man, I almost forgot, Chris Mancini. <laughs> Chris Mancini, that? the bracket racing Jesus, uh, went down to Keystone, uh, handed out some free uh, EDT samples yeah. for us. He's been begging me for a race jersey. I finally got him a race jersey. I'm telling you, it's the magic jersey. He put the jersey on. He took home the five grand uh, prize. I ran all the way through um, Big Monday Bracket Racing and kicked some butt. And congrats to Chris. I, I, I know it was a, uh, he was due. Let's just say that. Mm-hmm. So uh, really happy to see, see, see Chris in the winner circle again. Um, and we had some, we had some more. We had a bunch of people. Oh, our little cart guys also won again. I think oh. they got runner up by. Nope. Two. They, they won. Oh, they won junior one. three and, and, and yeah, runner up right. were junior one. Uh, we got some of this posted on the website. I was posting up on Sunday when everybody was calling me, telling me, I just won, I just won, I just won. I was like, wow, good weekend. Everyone's, the sauce is working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's going to be. Secret sauce. Secret sauce. Yeah, I gave him some more secret sauce for the cart. For the cart? Do you want to know what it is? You changed the weight. Do you want to know what to? Under 20 weight? Zero weight. They're going to run the zero zero. Why not? Well, we're not supposed to sell you that, <laughs> but R&D may or may not have been working on a 0W0 racing oil. Yeah, we'll see how but it But now works. we just told you, and it's out in the world, so see if the carts like it. They seem to like the lightweight yeah, stuff. It's, so. it's, a touch, it's a touch more than zero, but... Zero four. Zero point. Zero, zero point four, two. zero five-ish, yeah. Well, that's cool. I'll but it's it. a... They said this question would run great. because with the FR3, it, it thickens it up a touch. Right. That's the... I mean, that's FR3 is 30 weight? Yeah. Ish, so so zero good. base oil, zero weight base oil. Correct. With ten percent, five percent of our five percent. Well, there you go. I could do the math on that if you wanted me to, but I won't. One point. Well, it's only a thirteen ounce capacity, so that's true. true. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, good weekend all around for for Hot Shot Secret uh, drivers and pullers and go karters and everything. Um, and coming up this weekend. Speaking of Chris, the Bracket Racing Jesus, Mancini. Oh, yeah. He is in town in Ohio at Dragway 42. I just talked to him on lunch break along with Derek Klein, who drives the Hot Shot Secret Dragster. And there is a big money bracket race. I think it's two $20,000 prizes this weekend. I, I, speaking of street outlaws, they get, those two guys joint called me this week and gave me a little grief. Because they're like, assuming you're going to be at a Street Outlaws event this weekend, <laughs> us bracket racers could get some love. So I said, okay, I'll come see you guys. So we're going to set up uh, the Hot Chest Secret Canopies for their pits out there. That was the plan for today. I just messaged them and said, let's get this going. They're like, we're racing already. So they're already out there at Dragway 42 uh, getting some early Thursday racing in. But I'm going to go see them this weekend. So come on out. It's the Summit Fall Slam. Big money bracket racing. Uh, let's see if. Chris Mancini can repeat his wins. Uh, let's see if Derek Klein can get the Hot Shot Secret Dragster in the winner's circle. It'll be cool. So I'll be out there checking those guys out, supporting them. Um, and then let's see, coming up here, we're just now a couple weeks away. Mm-hmm. 28th and 29th is the Shy Diesel event. The big one. But they moved it. Right. Is it Wagler now? Yep. Okay. Whew. You ever been to it? Uh, no, I've. I was told that I'm not allowed to go to that. You know what? I've never been to it. Really? Isn't that yeah. crazy? I've also been told Chad's not allowed to go to it again. I don't, yeah. I think it may be the last town it was in. He might be like unwanted posters there. <laughs> right. And somehow they put my picture beside him like, watch out for these two guys. I did notice on the, on the, <laughs> on the layout map of the Shy Diesel event, like they have, you know, the camping areas. Mm-hmm. And then like over here behind the tower, it's got, it says quiet camping areas. Uh, so they're conscious of it. They're like, look, <laughs> they didn't say it's going to be the wild side. You just get it. Like, if you would need to be the quiet side, here's where, it's, here's right. where it is. So, gotcha. um, yeah, shout out to Wagler, Jeremy Wagler, Wagler Motorsports Park for, for taking on the event. And um, they're going to be, they got pulling, you know, they're going to have dyno competition, everything. So, so they have is a tuning school. Yeah, Ryan Milk is putting on a tuning school right now. It's going to be, I heard he just filled the classes. Hmm. Um, but he's doing that uh, the, the week before, during. And the Shy Diesel Extravaganza, I don't know what year it is. Do we know that? But it's been going on for a long time. Yeah. It is like one of the pinnacle of the diesel motorsport stuff. Dan Shide is just 
uh, an icon of our industry. And so it's been a pretty big move to move that event um, to Wagler. So, uh, but I think it's got such a great following. I don't, they could put it anywhere and yeah. everyone's going to come. So we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to getting another Outlaw Diesel race in. We've only got two in this whole year. So that's coming up here uh, in just a couple weeks. And then uh, scheduling update, the last Hot Shot Secret Untouchable No Prep race in Marion County uh, apparently has been moved from September, I think it was September 5th. It got moved out a week now, so it is now September 12th. So adjust your programming as needed. So I thought the, <clears throat> serious question, I thought the 12th was a repeat of the rained out one from two weeks ago. I don't think so. I think they just moved the next one to the 12th. Hmm. I'll have to check. I haven't heard from yeah, them Yeah, I don't know for sure. I just. Yep. Yeah, I see. Yeah, that, that's what Facebook said. That's what said. Facebook told us. So. <laughs> you got a sales and retail update? I should. Uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts is having a huge sale on Diesel Extreme, Stiction Eliminator, and FR3. $3 off Diesel Extreme, 32 ounce. $4 off FR3, 32 ounce. And $8 off of a 64 ounce Stiction Eliminator. Oh, that's a good deal. Wow, everything's on sale. <laughs> How long is that sale going? So, yeah. <laughs> if anyone is purchasing EDT at a larger retailer, I don't want to take away from the smaller dealers, but if they're already purchasing, purchasing EDT from a retail spot, well, purchase it from O'Reilly's for one week. Everybody pick this week to order it. I just want to see. See, see how much power you have yes, to move the needle? Right. Yeah, exactly. You know. Aaron has spoken. Let's try. Let's try my hand at marketing. <laughs> next week is next like, week is going like, to be like everybody PayPal me. I will buy it for you and send it your way. Why not? Don't do that, people. You won't see your product. Yes, you would. You'll see a really fast Camaro in your driveway. No, uh -huh. I doubt it. <laughs> so what about this newsletter thing? Is Bill Lutz coming over? What's that? Bill Lutz is stopping by. Bill. He said a fast Camaro was going to be in my ah, driveway. I got you. I got Surely you. not going to be mine. What's this newsletter? <clears throat> oh, the newsletter is really cool. You just go to hotshotsecret.com slash email, and you type uh -huh. in a couple of words, and about once a week <laughs> in your email, you're not going to believe this. i give you something cool. <laughs> News from Hot Shot Secret. Cool. So let's reverse the clock because we do that I a actually lot skipped today. kind of over it. And... Um, Oh, I forgot. We about always that one. have a nice little science corner. Now, am I going to guess no. that this week's science corner is tied into this week's lesson on coking? S somewhat. So, as you know, last week was supposed to be coking deposits, and I did not know that. Things got a little out of control around here, and I didn't have time to make a video except for the twelve-second little haha -ha funny one. Yep. So this week, fully intended on making a one hundred percent professional video. Yeah, so at 11.31, when I had a chance to film it, and you realize it's only 2 o'clock now, so it's a little quick one again. You always tell yourself short. So do we need a lead-in? Um, no. No? It's about regular coking deposits, not cherry coking deposits. Okay. There's your lead-in. You got that rack, Levi? Let's roll it. How you guys doing? I'm Chad Meyer 73 Check me out on YouTube. And here's Aaron with this week's Science Corner. Welcome to this week's Science Corner, where today we're going to be talking about coking deposits. The first test for coking deposits was the XUD9 test. The original test was two hours, and they realized that it just didn't have the results of real life until they started adding just a touch of zinc. One part per million of zinc increased the level of the deposits. This two hour test still didn't mimic real life and was unrepeatable. So they switched to a six hour test of a higher load. Again, the results were not mimicking real life. While we learned a lot from the XUD9 test, it wasn't repeatable, so we needed a better test method. Enter the XUD9AL test method. It utilized the same engine as the XUD9 test, but ran through a cycle for 10 hours of high, medium, and low loads. The XUD9AL test was a fantastic test method, 
but it utilized the indirect injection. Since direct injection was becoming more commonplace, we needed a new test method. Enter the DW10 test. In the beginning phases of the DW10 test, we utilized the same test procedure as the 9AL test. However, as always, these results did not mimic real life. So the test procedure had to be changed and changed and changed and tested and tested until the final procedure is a one hour cycle of varying load and RPM repeated eight times. The engine is then shut down for eight hours, started back up, eight more one hour cycles and shut down until a total of 48 hours runtime and 40 hours of cool time are observed. So the DW10 is a great test, but dude, come on, it's a four cylinder. What about us tough guys with tough trucks? Enter the Cummins L10 test. 10 liters of turbocharged Cummins direct injection power. In this test, there are actually two engines back to back. One runs and turns the other motor, and then this motor runs and turns the other. So this one's on, this one's off, this one's on, this one's off. 125 hours going back and forth produced really close to real world results. In all of these tests, there's a direct correlation between coking deposits and power loss on the dyno. So what are some of the influences on coking deposits? As we've talked about, zinc, even at one part per million, can influence the coking deposits. You get zinc from your oil through blow-by or worn-out valve guides and seals. Biodiesel, the higher the content, the higher the formation of deposits. Cavitation is the only one that reduces coking deposits. Nozzle size, shape, and geometry also affect the coking deposits. On the old mechanical injection, the holes were a lot larger and the pressure was lower. Newer common rails have smaller injector holes and higher pressure, which has a higher effect on deposits. The placement of the nozzle holes, the closer to the center or out farther towards the edge. The angle of the holes, straight down or to the sides. And the shape, either straight up or more of a cone shape. Auto oxidation of the fuel occurs even at ambient temperatures. Polymerization of the fuel occurs from ambient all the way up to 572 degrees. Thermal cracking, thermal decomposition, and thermal condensation happen as well. So we've talked about influences. What is the composition of coking deposits? Oxygen, zinc, and carbon are the main ones. So what is the physical mechanism where they actually deposit? For the most part, it's unknown. However, the coking deposits that are already on there from combustion, some of the fuel leaks out when the nozzle's closed, the leftover fuel then becomes a sticky mess on these coking deposits, which further cokes and adds to the deposit. So we've talked a little bit about coking. How do we fix it? Diesel Extreme has passed the L10 and the DW10 test for cleanup level. Use Diesel Extreme to prevent coking and remove coking deposits. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed it. And back to you, Levi. <laughs> ah, you got a shout out since he's been on live now. Great. Well, that's interesting. It'd been more interesting if you actually watched it. I watched some of it. You're, you're playing <laughs> tic tac toe. Tic -tac -toe. No, no, no. Honestly, like, you came in and talked to the sales department this week about, about it, and um, a lot of the coking we we have knowledge of is really on the oil side. Right. So it's real interesting to learn more about uh, the fuel side, how it happens, and, and, and turns out, which we're going to kind of dive into a little bit deeper here. Is the answer cavitation? At some point, it has to be right if I say it every time, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, speaking of cavitation, yes, that is the one influencer that actually works in reverse. It actually Correct. prevents. Pre yes. And, and when we say cavitation, that means that there's some turbulence to the fuel flow. It's not a. It's 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 not a straight laminar. Flow. Okay. Pattern. Whoa, that's there's some science word. for you. But why does the turbulence in, uh, like, do you feel like it's it's creating a uh, a brush motion, if you will, to sweep the? It sort of implodes on itself and then cracks the coking deposit, and they 
fall off. Okay, so it's almost like yeah. a, it's almost like a like a like a like a pressure washer or something, and it's coming down in, and hitting in it. In effect, and, yeah. And so short of that, there's a lot of things that contribute to the coking deposit. Right. Um, question for you. Oh, here we go. No, no, no. It's it shouldn't Wait, be hard. Wait, cavitation was already done, so yeah, I don't know the answer. Off table. We can't use okay. it anymore. Okay. We don't, we know cavitation actually <sighs> helps right. remove coking deposits. What is the main? We know there's plenty of them. Which one is the main cause? You're going there. Yeah, I am. So we obviously heat. Is that but number one? Meh, meh. We're, they can fight it out. Okay, let's fight it out. No, heat and zinc can fight it out for the okay. number one. They're both pretty important. Obviously, without heat, the deposits don't form typically. Right. But just a small amount of zinc, ta-da, we've got tons of deposits forming. So. Right. So it really the, is a... It, the presence of zinc is... It's a chicken I, and egg. Um, yeah. Is that what they call it? Well, egg and chicken. Yeah. I don't know. Scrambled Well, you can't have one without the other, really, right? <laughs> will, will a small amount of zinc create coking deposits without heat? Not so much. Okay. Coolant temperature, oil temperature, it all kind of plays a role. Right. Like any... There's so many variables. Like even like fuel analysis, like the fuel itself... We've seen fuel analysis. Okay, well, this one has a lot more calcium. This has, and it's two that look identical. One will throw deposits like crazy, and the other one won't. So we can't quite figure out what what's going on. Right. I know that's terrible, but no, I mean it's the like, truth. Like okay, if this one, do, they they should both have an issue. But and so not, let me ask you this to too. And, and and there's there's quite a few different chemical chemicals additives in in all our oils. Zinc's a commonly known one. Like, right. if you ask somebody that doesn't know anything about oil, a lot of times you say, name one additive in oil. They'll say zinc. Right. You know, um, and we know that zinc's an excellent anti wear. Mm -hmm. Well, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think you said even like one part per million? Yes. So, I mean, the smallest little itty bitty amount of zinc can right. cause problems. Yeah, so in the worn injectors. valve guides, valve seals, blow by, worn out rings. Right. So, well, let's walk that through. That's people are probably trying to figure out. Okay, so I got zinc in my oil. How how am I having these injector problems? Right. Okay, so that zinc has to get from the oil over to the fuel side. No, they're into the they're in the combustion chamber or the cylinder. Right. Well, and you're going to get some blow by around the ring. Mm hmm And some oils left from it not properly squeegeeing. From the squeegee. Right. Effect. The squeegee effect. We're right. going to use that one later. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so as our rings are sealed to the cylinder walls, squeegeeing in that oil, um, right. there is some left behind. Absolutely. The smallest amount of oil that's left behind um, that can have one part per million zinc in it mm -hmm. can make its way to that injector. To, yeah. And it's to arguably the number one cause arguably. for coking Correct. deposits in injectors. Yes. So, um, so in... This pseudo ties into all these regulations and federal EPA standards and things like that. Like, okay, now we have to have lower and lower zinc. It's uh, because the clogged injectors and create you, poor fuel economy, poor emissions. And then you're giving up engine wear and, protection. And power. So, I know. Yeah, so it's kind of a, but they're playing the game and eventually we're going to have no zinc oil. Right. Well, if fortunately. Okay, maybe not. But Fortunately, that's caused... Uh, the industry to adapt. Now mm -hmm. we've found new ways to protect the the motor aside from zinc. Right. Um, you know, molybdenum, Molly's been out mm -hmm. for years. It's some old technology. We use a carbon nanotechnology with our mm -hmm. FR3 that, um, you know, protects and reduces wear in, in the motor. Right. So it is one of those things. It, this gets back to the, the guys. I, you know, I just had a Facebook hero just recently, and somebody had asked a question about oil, and I was trying to explain something, you know. First guy comes bumbling in the, the Facebook room and was like, oh, it doesn't matter. There's no such thing as good or bad oil. Well, all oil is the same. It's like, wow. You know, it's like, I don't even want to have the conversation, but that's where all this comes in. Once we start having these regulations, because they're trying to fix one problem, it creates other problems, but also creates market opportunities. Right. Tribologists then have to say, okay, well, we can't use this much anymore. We need to find another, yeah. another way. And often that's how we find new products, too. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, all we're trying to do is clean out an injector. We're not going to sell our 70-year-old bottle of stuff anymore. Right. That we've made a 
lifetime of. So, I know one of my notes here says co-formation <laughs> increases dramatically as local metal contact temperatures exceed 300 degrees Celsius. 572 Fahrenheit. I didn't have the translation. I'm glad you did. That's math. So that gets back to the, <laughs> that gets back to my. Those, those two just looked at me so astonished and amazed, like, wow, he did that in his head. <laughs> so we're getting back to the heat thing then, right? Yes. Is extreme heat, if you're having a heat problem with your motor, are you more check, susceptible check. to? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So, so, so you don't want to do hot shutdowns? No. 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 Thermophoresis. <gasps> There's a big word. Thermophoresis. That's five. That's a new record for you. <laughs> Usually it's five letters, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so what, what happens when you're shutting down uh, hot? It cokes. All right. Because it's sizzling there. You're not going to yeah. get much oil flow. Right. Same thing we well, talk about when you don't cool down the turbo and a little puddle of oil that's sitting on the turbo bearing, right. all of a sudden, qu quick shutdown, and it's just sizzling that, mm. and you start to get a stick right. buildup. Would and you, that's why they modified for the DW10 test right. to include the shutdown. Yeah, I got it. And the L10 test, all yeah. of them. Just kidding. You lost me on the it's on, the DW10. On, on the yeah. Oh yeah, we didn't go over the mechanic or the no, we didn't. The procedures yesterday. No, so that was new to me. I learned that in your video, so I appreciate it. You're, you're undistracted X. in your videos. I like it. X. Yeah, that's true. See the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until the, the blooper reel. There's some beauty. Chris walked in during half of halfway through. I, the first. I walked in. I saw some. It was good. Uh, it was good. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So the low clearance scavenge ports increase the likelihood of blockage due to shedding. Prolonged aircraft inactivity enables moisture absorption of coke deposits, which typically shed after startup. Mm. I'm not following. Is it the shedding of the deposits? Yes. Okay. Sometimes they'd fall off. And then it's not like when we see like some water in the fuel that could actually blow the head off of an injector tip. Right. No, this is just the coking. So the coking falls off, but is it then shot off into... And we're good. Yeah, it, yeah. it takes care of itself then. Yeah. So is there ever, is there ever a coking problem to the point where the particle count and particle size is big enough that it can cause damage to the injector. Brief. These are external deposits. Correct. So EDIDs. For the most part, yeah. So typically not to the injector. So really. Not damage exactly, but it can clog the nozzles and. Right. And, and the you're going to. Exactly. So at the end of the day, that's really where the inefficiency comes from. Is, yeah. And we pulled up some videos when our training this week. Yeah. But when you're looking at the at the spray patterns of these diesel injectors. I mean, they're well, 35, 30,000 PSI. Yeah. So, and you're talking about around. a normal, normal gasoline vehicle might be 60, 65 PSI. Mm, 43, 58. Somewhere there, 40, 60 PSI. Yeah. Whereas, um, you know, diesel is under extreme pressure. Right. So the importance, and as we say, coming out of that injector tip, and I noticed in your video, you talked a lot about the direction of the nozzles, the, the mm -hmm. angles, the, the shape of them. That's why we have companies like Exergy and right. S&S yeah, that, that just specialize that in this That portion didn't stuff. make it into the video. Apparently, I stumbled through it a little too much. Like, companies spend thousands and thousands of hours and dollars on research for just the nozzle holes. Yep. To not only to get the most performance, but then they, to reduce the coking. Right. So, I mean, you may have the best injector in the world, and all of a sudden it clogs up. Well, oops. Yeah, and no there's good. some cool, so. there's some cool video of it. I I remember I can't remember whose booth had it at PRI last year, but they had this really cool injector booth that you know it's the glass window. Yeah. And you can see these things fire and talk about the pressure it's under and the nozzle injector and the angle shooting out this beautiful stream like you know really fine mist. And as you said, the smaller the particle, right. the more more I don't I, I I always use the word combustion. It's not a combustion, but more efficiency the burn is on it. More efficient combustion. So combustion you're, is a good word. I can take and use it. Okay. Yeah, just efficiency is. Okay. It's combustion though. So. Yeah. But the big droplets are the ones that get passed through almost. Right. Then all of a sudden, um, th there's some black and smoke. There's some uh, DPF cleaning going on yeah. and what whatnot. So, 
that means your mile per gallon is going down. You're going to be, mm -hmm. you're burning less less fuel to make power than you are dumping through. So the finer that nozzle pattern can spray that, the better. So that's why this is so important, is because when you get these deposits on there, it just takes a little bit to upset your spray pattern. Right. So it's the spray pattern itself. So you can have a dirty injector, flow test it, and it flow tests almost identical to a brand new one. But just to touch on the on the side and your spray pattern's off and you're losing 2%. Right. 3% horsepower, fuel economy, all the above. Remind me about an analogy I have for that. I'll tell you later. All right. So. Got it. It's not good for video, for here. Until <laughs> when you're older. So, all right, so uh, well, let's see if we have any questions. Um, I'm sure people want to know about this. <laughs> That's what we do around here. We, we sit around and talk about weird oil and fuel stuff. So. <laughs> That's all we do. No, I'm just kidding. No, uh, let's see. These conversations come up a lot. It's not a joke. They do. When people call in and ask a lot. We're happy. To, mm -hmm. and, and like I would say, if we don't know, we'll find out, which usually means we're running down the hallway to Kevin and Aaron and ask them. But uh, Eric Daniels says, I religiously use your uh, Stiction Eliminator, but recently was told by a guy to switch to BG products in my oil. What's the difference in your product and BG? That's a good question. I think he does not need to switch religions at this time. <laughs> and he, he might need to find a new friend. <laughs> now, honestly, no. we, we got the BG product oil. There, we got two different oil products in to test right. last year, and we haven't even had a chance. Right. So I honestly am not going to misrepresent that product by any means. Yeah. Uh, so I, I will do homework. I've got it written down. Yeah, and the, get back in touch with you. The we hear good things. We test everything here. Like we, we should show you the closet that we have in our R and D. It's like literally looks like an auto parts store of chemicals. Like everything that's out there, we we try to test. Uh, and we have tested BG, not for, formally for what we're going to be using it for coming up, but we have got the BG question enough that we're at, we're going to be right. adding it to. If you've ever been out to one of our races or shows or we put this up on our on our website a lot this is the oil side though you know okay we, we well we, we have the scrub tests on the stiction all that type of stuff so um we'll put comparisons or head-to-head -head comparisons with all our competitors um we don't like to talk down on a lot of other companies but mm -hmm. we are not scared to put data out there and let you judge for yourself we hear good things about bg i know yeah. um it's got a good reputation uh that being said on the stiction eliminator side uh, we are, we do have a comparison coming up. Until we have all the data out there, I'll just I'll just give you the simple definition that I can say about Stiction Eliminator versus any product out there. We invented it. We brought it to market. <laughs> there wasn't there there wasn't this product before we brought it to hmm. market. Since we brought it to market, which started Hot Shot Secret, actually, what does Stiction Eliminator used to be called? Hot Shot Secret. Hot Shot Secret. It was a one product company called Hot Shot Secret, and it it was the birth of this entire company. Um, we were first to bark with that product. Since then, there are tons of copycats out there. There's a, there's a whole bunch of them that make a similar product, uh, but uh, I'll just say nobody makes... Similar intended usage product. Similar intended usage, yeah. I'll, I'll just say none, none of them have tested uh, uh, past ours. So at the end of the day, I mean, do you want to give... A quick overview of what the Stiction Eliminator is. I mean, we got a group four, group fives in there. It's, no, you don't want to get, get, go through it? No, I don't. <laughs> We're talking about Diesel Extreme. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll say this much, Eric Daniels. <laughs> uh, we, I'll, since we I'll, do I'll have do BG. A, I'll get a small over, overview and, and, okay. and send them. Fair enough. Well, we do have, to answer your question, Eric, we do have BG in the lab. We're going to do a full, it's a full intended uh, third-party analysis on it. Any comparison. So we'll have more data on that uh, coming soon. Josh Hernandez says, what events are you guys still going to this year? Seems like everything has been canceled. Yeah, Josh, it does seem like that. We're hoping uh, the Outlaw Diesel Series, we're told the rest of the seasons ago. So we've got uh, Shy Diesel in Indiana coming up. Next month is back down in Holt, uh, Florida mm -hmm. for at Emerald Coast. And then the following month is 
uh, the Rudy's finale. Um, so those are supposed to all be a go. Josh is giving me some bad news on the polling, saying we're probably not going to have any more of that. Uh, we do have some local events that we support uh, as well. I think we might be going. I just saw some emails passed around today about the uh, the Beans Diesel, the blackout event they have uh, down in Tennessee. We might be attending that. I think that's in the works right now. Um, if you have any... Uh, we'll, we'll be at PRI. Again, SEMA was canceled. APEX was canceled. We'll be at PRI. If you have any events uh, or things you think would be good for us, you'd like to see us out and support, let us know. Um, our schedule kind of opened up a little bit. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted. But, Josh, if you go to our Facebook page, I'm sure... I'm sure that our Josh has all of that, all of our events updated and on the schedule. I just got the meh. So <laughs> looks like Josh has some homework uh, when we get off here to make sure it's, it's like all he's updated. He's been in R&D for a while. Yeah, exactly. Meh. John Bailey, first time viewer and user. Well, welcome, John. We love people like you. Just bought my first diesel, 2019, 2019 Ram 3500. 6,000 miles on it, and my first purchase for the truck was a bottle of Extreme and EDT. Which of your oils do you recommend along with additives? Great question. First of all, John, congrats on uh, the truck. It was probably one of my favorite trucks out there. Um, you're doing right by starting off with the Diesel Extreme and the EDT. Uh, with only 6,000 miles on it, we recommend Diesel Extreme every 6,000 miles. Because you know what? You might get some coking deposits built up in there that we want to clean out. Hmm. So uh, it's a good time to run the Diesel Extreme through. Run EDT in every other tank going forward. Uh, every 6,000 miles, do a, a dose of Diesel Extreme. As far as on the oil side of things, uh, we have both oils and additives. So we always recommend to start off with our two-step approach, which is our Stiction Eliminator and our, and our FR3. I'm going to advise you to move right to FR3 uh, just because you only got 6,000 miles on the motor. So there is not enough buildup of that motor that FR3 can't handle. So whatever oil you go with, I don't know if you've got like a factory warranty on there that makes you go use their oil and get an oil change X amount. I know a lot of people are sometimes tied to those type of things. Uh, at, the, at the minimum, if you're at the mercy of the dealership's oil, I highly recommend adding FR3 to that oil. The FR3 is going to reduce your wear by 42%. 43. 43%. My bad. Um, so... It's really cool if you start <laughs> off ownership of the vehicle Marketing. and reducing the wear out of the gate like that. So too often do we see people purchasing, you know, a diesel truck with 200,000 miles on it that's, you know, still running good. And they're like, now I want to take care of it. And it's like, well, it would have been nice for you to start taking care of it at 6,000 miles, you know. So if you start with FR3 out of the gate, you're literally uh, theoretically doubling the life of that motor, like, right away. So, um if you do have the capability of changing to a different oil, you know, um, if you don't have a, 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 you know, two years free oil changes from your new purchase or something like that that you want to use, which I don't blame you. All right, well, <laughs> so uh, uh, all of our oils are already infused with the FR3. So the only thing I advise to you on which of your oils do you recommend along with additives is really comes down to how long of an interval you want to have. If you're looking... Uh, if you're a guy who's just adamant about changing your oil every 5,000 miles and you're going to do that regardless, uh, we have a group two, group three blend, green diamond that will be fine for you. It will cover your interval and still hold grade and have FR3 on it. If you want to extend your interval a little longer, we have a full group three green diamond option that comes in 1540 and 540. Uh, 1030 as and well 1030 now. now for the new trucks. How about that? That's nice. So that will allow you to extend your interval, you know, we like to see analysis, but an easy 10,000 miles plus, uh, you, you know, you can run on that. Right. If you want to go with the, all the bells and whistles, that's when we mm. recommend stepping it up to uh, running a bypass filter on the truck, which is a secondary oil filter, um, running our Blue Diamond, which is our PAO, Group 4 PAO, and now we can really extend that interval. Do some oil analysis every 10,000 miles, um, make sure that the oil's still in grade, which it will be because it's PAO, Make sure it's clean, which it will be because you're running a bypass filter. Only thing we got to watch is the TBN level. Yeah. Make sure we have enough detergent in there. We can view that with oil analysis, and we'll advise you to add a few ounces of, of a product we have called TBN Booster. 
Boom. What a fitting name. What a fitting name. So okay, you can just top off. Center uh, stage for a second. Yep. You can see how thick and good stuff's in there. So, uh, and, and that allows you to recharge your detergent package and keep rolling. Um, so we really have multiple levels of, of oil that you can use. And again, all of them have F3 in them. So you're going to get that benefit. What it really comes down to is what your planned interval is and, and your game plan for the vehicle. But if you want to call in and talk to uh, one of our A's here or myself, uh, we answer the phone all day and be happy to talk about your exact setup. But congrats on that. I uh, uh, Congrats on the truck. And thanks for watching, first time viewer. See, I don't have control over the prizes anymore. See? Normally I give a first time viewer like that, like he's getting a bottle. Sorry, bro, this is their thing now. Josh, Josh just stole, stole stuff from me, so. So uh, thanks again, John Bailey, and let us know how it goes with the truck. Uh, Eric Daniels says, have you guys thought about selling France filters for fuel pumps? Last week worked on some and didn't realize how often the oil needs changed in them. A fuel pump? Are we, are we talking like a fuel station pump or just any type of fuel pump? Are we talking oh, about, at that first I was thinking about right. on the vehicle. Right. The answer would be probably not. Really? Yes. If it's an oil-fed system? Say that one more again. An oil, an oil fed, it's got to be oil controlled. He's talking about changing the oil on them. So why, why wouldn't you want to filter? You lost me. Last week I worked on some and didn't realize how often the oil needs changed on the fuel pumps. It's just like any other pump, so it's going to have a fuel, huh. an oil side. <laughs> kind of like our pumps on our, on our land. How about that? <laughs> so let me ask you this question. Are pumps Bypass on only. Bypass only? Yes, don't full flow it. It will explode. Oh, More right. than likely, yeah. Right, so you'd have to control your... But yeah, it's, it's not going to flow as much as a regular filter on there, but... Right. So what about, like, what about the pumps on our lines out here? Um, are those oil fed? No. They're not? Not at all. Okay, so this is, so, but basically any type of oil system like that, if it's, uh, especially if it's an oil that needs to be changed often, Eric, I, I really want to know why it needs to be changed. Uh, what, uh, is it oxidizing? I mean, you could find some improvements with it. I think he just said the filters get nasty and plug up. Am I misunderstanding this whole situation? I didn't hear you we need, that. we need pictures and drawings for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> my, my, my point is, Eric, if, if it's a... The, there's probably some gain that can be made on the oil side itself. Maybe an improvement in the oil, you know, like you know, some like you said, some sort of, sort of hydraulic oil or something. We know the FR3 has a lot of gains to it, so we could probably find something on the oil side to extend that interval longer um, before going straight to a bypass filter. But I don't know, Eric. If you want to give us a call, well, uh, Chris. Yeah, that's a Chris one. Chris <laughs> would love that. Yes. Call in and ask for Chris Gabrelchek. <laughs> um, actually, what's uh, his what's his extension number? I'll just put a cell phone out. He gives he, he gives his cell phone <laughs> everywhere. He did it last time when we were live. Seventy eight hundred viewers though. So yes, we're all seventy eight hundred out there. Right. <laughs> that scared her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Richard Mabry says, "Hey guys, more good information. Rocking his top fan badge. Nice. What I missed? Just got on. Well, Keith." You're going to have to hit rewind, man. Matt Rice is in. <laughs> Toots in. Yeah, I thought All Matt oil Rice is not was... the same. You are correct, Josh. Is Matt Rice going to Skype in or not? Yeah. Matt, have you figured out the Skype? He's Come probably on. He's probably going to want to do another call out on you. We're already over time. Oh, crap. Well, wow. let me finish up with the comments then. Terry Howard with his top fan plus one badge. Every customer I sell Diesel Extreme and EDT at O'Reilly's comes back to me to tell me how it works and buys more. I've been told more power and quicker acceleration. For those that have tried the Stiction Eliminator, come back to tell me how much quieter they run and faster turbo spools. You nailed it, man. I mean, that's exactly what we see all the time. It's, and that's, all, that's also why we're, when we're at these events, we actually give away for EDT. It costs us a ton of money, but we give samples away. And then people come back the next day and buy a bunch of it. It's like the easiest marketing on earth. It's like, I don't have to tell you about it here. Just go put it in your truck. So uh, it's, it's got to be an interesting perspective for you, Terry, at an O'Reilly's to see that repeat business like that. And, yeah, same thing with the uh, Stix Eliminator and FR3. We hear it all the time. 
quieting lifters, yeah. ticks, noises, those little gremlins that you get in the motor that are just kind of annoying. Give it a try. You should be, you wouldn't be, you'd be surprised. Dylan kicks us. What's up, Kyle? What's up, Dylan? I saw you chasing Hercules down the track and his victory like you always do. Congrats, man. Good weekend for you guys. Uh, $10,000 win. I'd like to see that. Shout out to our guy, Hercules. Hercules. Heath says, I entered to win that big bottle of Diesel Extreme. I'm due for the 6,000 miles my dose of it. Again, compare the SDS and see for yourselves what would you buy. Yeah, we could go. I think he's probably referring to the BG. No. SDS does not tell you everything. It sure doesn't. I'll tell you right now, an SDS can be a very creative marketing cheat, too. So, you know what tells you everything? Analysis. We'll, we'll, actually, we'll actually find out really what's, what's in everything and, and get back to you. But uh, SDS, you got to be careful with SDSs. They're, they can be misleading. And they don't even have to, there's no law saying they have to tell you. 99%. Non-hazardous ingredients. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Keith Woods, October, you should come to Maple Grove for Smoke and Speed event. Great turnout every year. Well, Keith Woods, I'm going to write that down because I just may. I just uh, spoke uh, to, oh, what's her name? Our friend over there at Smoke and Speed. And our buddy Steve Schwanger at Schwanger Brothers & Co., uh, has been begging me to go to that Maple Grove event. And so with the schedule opening up, Keith Woods, you might see us there. That's one that I do want to throw on the schedule. Uh, Angel, how many questions we got? Angel, just received my order. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go, we're going to warp mode. Just received <laughs> my order and just started the extreme. And once I get due for the oil change, I'm going with oil additives. Awesome, Angel. I remember talking to you uh, last week. I think he was one of the new ones in. So great to see you, you following up. Bavon Aqui Peraz, sorry if I butchered that. O'Reilly's in Hawaii's does not carry your product. I can only find you at AutoZone, and they're a little hit and miss with availability. Of course, we can't get it shipped from online sales. Help us out on the islands. Can't ship to Hawaii? They do, but they get charged a little Oh, they get, they get taxed hard on it? Yeah. Oh, man. Hey. That's what you get for living on an island, man. You gotta pay a little more shipping. <laughs> I'll trade you. She's a you, you can come live in Ohio and get some free shipping. Um, I'll check on the O'Reilly's thing. I was not aware of that. Yeah. My understanding is we have a full, full, full spread of O'Reilly's. So, yeah. um, Brian Mers, if you're watching, let's get on O'Reilly's and tell them that those people out in Hawaii need some product. He's probably still on the boat. Yeah. On the plane. Yep. <laughs> so. Uh, and Brian, there are there are a couple other uh, retail locations. I think there's, I think there's tractor supply in Hawaii. I don't know. We say that like they're like Hawaii is just like this big, but. Farm uh, store. But. Right. That's that's the thing. You may want to speak to your O'Reilly's uh, manager of that store too. So, because for a while before, one thing that's unique about O'Reilly's, I remember this from the marketing side. Even if it's a product that they don't carry as part of our arrangement with O'Reilly's, those store managers can order direct like different products off of our, you know, if they want to stock TBN, a local O'Reilly store can do just that bottle, buy direct right. from us rather than go through the distributor relationship that we usually do. So, uh, Ben, we'll, we'll follow up on that. Todd Cowley's in, Utah in the house, of course. He says, once again, great show. John Bailey, thanks, great info. David Sanders is watching. Just saw David stop by here uh, last week. So good to see you, David. City Fisher's watching. Love you, Kyle. Love you too, Mom, as always. Uh, October 27th, he says, for the sm smoke and speed. Rich Sprinzel, you made it in at the very, very final cut here. Last question of the day. Any trans oil for Dodge Nag 1 or 8 speed? Gear transfer case fluid for a 2017 Durango all wheel drive. Well, funny you asked, Rich. A ATF plus four. Wrong answer. We'll slow down. You slow down. ATF plus four is coming. That's, a, that's irrelevant to this conversation. Okay, so update me and Rich Brenzel. Eight speed is ZF fluid. Yeah. Which oh. our multi vehicle ATF does meet that spec. However, it's red instead it of the fluorescent, the fluorescent green. green. Right. So if you're under some type of warranty and have to use that, that special fluid, we're kind of out. But, but, don't care about but a that. Nag One's running ATF plus four. Huh. Cool. 
Yeah. So, Rich, uh, we do have an ATF Plus 4 coming out. So that's gonna, that, that'll get you on the NAG1. The HP, the ZF transmission fluid, we do have that spec under our, our uh, both ATF fluids that we have, adrenaline and uh, blue diamond. It's not fluorescent green. So um, they just did it so they can spot leaks from the manufacturer, which is kind of cool. Um, but it's just, it's just a different color, but it meets your spec. Josh Lurie's in, James Bruce, what's up? Until next time. Oh, we got to announce the winners. Oh, My yeah. My bad. So from, from the drawing of this week, we got two winners I'm seeing, right, guys? Two every week. Two every week. So, and we just get emails. So first winner is Dan Barnett 50 at something.com. That's seven asterisks.com. Yep. Dan Barnett 50 at something.com and DLNLJN at something.com. Four asterisks.com. D-L-N-L-J-N at something.com. Are you live for the bonus prize? For the bonus prize. If you're live, shout out right now. <laughs> so th these guys are going to win what? Diesel Extreme. Diesel Extreme. Why don't you notice you're flexing some EDT out there too. So, yeah. uh, so, so Dan Barnett and whoever DL is, we will send you some Diesel Extreme. We'll, we'll reach out to them, right? And if you're live, you can shoot us a message here. We'll send you out uh, something bonus. Might be another bottle of Diesel Extreme. Might, Might be not. Aaron's autograph. Mm. Might be Josh's sweaty jersey from the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have to find my hero cards. Oh, I forgot. We have one huge announcement. Oh, we do? Huge. Let's announce it. Uh, right now, in design, they are finishing up the final design for y'all Mamer Jammers Need Science shirts from me, and we'll, they will be on sale. Nice. I'll buy one of those. I'm in. All right, folks. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We're here every Thursday at 1.30 p.m. So we will be back again next week. Um, uh, I'll be out of Drag Me 42 this weekend for all you big money bracket racers. Let's root on Chris Mancini and Derek Klein. And until then, have a good weekend. See you next week.